Now, the curiosity at the end of the day got the better of me. And I rang the switchboard. I said, is the repeater on the fifth floor? And they went, well, only Peter, the head of television. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> How did you break into British television? Oh, wow. My my career in TV started in a very bizarre way. I was actually in the queue at uh, the, um, the Takeaway Canteen at, um, at the BBC in Manchester. And the BBC shared um, uh, the, the, the canteen and the catering facilities, television and radio. And I was working in local radio. And I went out one lunchtime to get my lunch on a break from my local radio uh, thing that I was working on. And I was just standing in the queue and, and this chap at the side of me, was we were just chatting and, and there was a piece of lemon meringue pie and it was literally phosphorescent yellow. I mean, it was glowing. And we were just laughing about the lemon meringue pie. And as we walked away, he said, by the way, what do you do? I went, oh, I went downstairs in the local radio. He said, oh, it was what about television? I was like, no, why? He said, I don't know if you ever fancy it, Peter, fifth floor. I was like, oh, all right. So the curiosity at the end of the day got the better of me. And I rang the switchboard. I said, is there a Peter on the fifth floor? And they went, well, only Peter, the head of television. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> so I phoned him up and he was the head of television. And I was like, OK. And he said, no, I you know, just saw something in you. And I thought, hmm, so uh, here are a few people to call and I'll put in a good word for you. And so I started out in, uh, in kids TV in Manchester, did a few kids TV shows. And then that led at the same time I was carrying on as a journalist doing travel reporting and all sorts of things. I ended up doing stuff for Radio 4 and, uh, um, and then I, 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 I got a break and ended up presenting Wish You Were Here, which was a travel show. And that then led into Homes Under the Hammer, which was one of those shows that just, who, who could have predicted this, but we're 19 years on and still going strong. <laughs> and staying with your TV career, what has been your favourite TV moment? Um, favourite TV moment? Um, uh, uh, so there's a few. It's, when, when you see people who've been positively affected by what you do, and I meet them all the time on Homes Under the Hammer, people who've done what I've said and, and have gone on and, and been really successful. And uh, there, was, um, there was one lady who, who was standing in a house and she bought it with, um, with the money that her mum had left her and her mum had just passed away. And so on the face of it, really sad. It was sad, but she said, well, no, but I was with my mum in the last stages of her life. And, um, you know, we were, we were listening and watching you uh, from the hospice together. And my mum turned around to me one day and said, you must, when I die, I'll leave, I'll be leaving you some money. You must do what this young man tells you, pointing at me. And there we were, you know, six months later in a house that she'd bought you know, as a result of watching Homes Under the Hammer with her mum. And that was a really touching little little moment, you know. Um, just people in the street who come up and it, it clearly it, it, it's had a positive help on them, you know, in their life. You know, often people come across it at times when, um, you know, life is uh, difficult um, at home, um, you know, maybe being um, a young parent or, you know, going through, you know, having kids at home or maybe you've been maybe done it, maybe you're poorly or, or whatever it might be. So sometimes some people come to it in difficult times and it helps them go get through those times. Uh, and that's always wonderful to hear. And then, you know, I suppose, you know, going on I'm a Celebrity was 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 an interesting experience. And, um, you know, that had lots of highs and lots of lows. But overall, um, you know, I, I thought that was, that was quite an extraordinary experience for me to go through. And there's the, I do look back at bits of that, which obviously, if you search on YouTube, there's lots of funny clips. And some of it is quite genuinely hysterical. <laughs> um, but I have to say, you know, what I'm doing now, the Monty, you know, uh, that's television that can save lives. And that, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a privilege to be part of. What is your proudest professional achievement? Um, so I, I'm really proud of, I mean, I do property training courses, um, which, you know, it's great to see people, you know, take my advice and our trainings and go on to be successful. One of the things we really encourage is, um, is, is charitable giving. So, you know, when people are, you know, are successful, we suggest that they're giving a portion of the, their, their 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 earnings and their their you know their success back to charity, which is, means I'm, I'm directly, if you like, 
um, somewhere down the line, hopefully benefiting all sorts of charities. But I've also written a series of children's books and um, called The Vills. And um, one of those I wrote especially for the NSPCC or in conjunction with in support of the NSPCC. And that's to, to do with my, I've got a charity called the Martin Roberts Foundation, which is all about child mental well-being. So it's to to encourage initiatives which help with children's and young people's mental well-being. And this book just gets kids thinking about emotions in a in, in a supportive way uh, and also gets them to reach out for help if they need it through Charline and the NSPCC. And um, we managed to raise enough money to to give uh, two free copies of this book to every single primary school in the UK and every single public library. And we're looking to try and raise more to give more books out to individual children. We've already handed out about 40,000 books. But, um, you know, there's another 700,000 children in the kind of age range that we're looking at to go. So we will continue with that. But but getting getting that book out there was uh, was a was a hugely proud moment for me. If you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, gosh, you know, I would say uh, to a young me, uh, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, uh, things have a habit of coming right in the end. Do it now. It's something I was told, you know, by somebody on a, on a hospital ward when I was uh, working for the hospital radio station. And this guy said three words, do it now. And we often procrastinate, don't we? We spend more time worrying about doing what we've got to do than actually doing it. Once we've done it, we actually feel quite good. So I would say, you know, follow that through, um, you know, and um, you, you just um, have fun. You know, have life is short. Life is short. Have fun uh, every moment that you can.